Um, welcome to our site. Uh, for those that are new to us, we ask that you would like, subscribe, and share. And for those who would like to also support us financially, we have some links where you can support us financially and uh, be a part of our family, if you will. If you need to uh, speak to me, just send me an email, and I will gladly return your requests. So thank you again, and I do appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are looking at the soul of mankind. And I actually stayed purposefully, I stayed on several podcasts to focus, to show you guys that um, the soul of man, the spirit of man and the body of man became corrupted uh, due to um, Adam's disobedience to God's word. And I have stayed here and showed you guys that this particular dimension that we're dealing with right now, where we have the human existence of the uh, the man with the soul, is governed by obedience to God and disobedience to God. And we saw that in representation with the two Adams, the first Adam and the last Adam. And so I wanted to spend some time to show you that that first Adam man's soul, spirit, soul, and body became corrupted, and God had to come up with a remedy by which he can fix that condition that took place with the first Adam. And the last Adam came to present that remedy to fix us. And so the scripture tells us that you and I, through becoming born again through faith, and again, this whole thing is done by faith, by um, the first Adam did not uh, activate faith when he disobeyed God. He disobeyed God, and so he focused on, um, he did not use his faith to overcome. Because Jesus Christ, that's how he overcame the enemy through the last Adam, he says, it is written. And so he pointed the enemy back to the word of God, which Adam should have done, but he refused to do that. And because he rebelled against God, we were in this state. And so Jesus came to rectify that. God came to rectify that. And that is why I say to you, um, when you have an understanding of this, then you understand the statement, no man can come to the Father but through me, because I'm the only way by which the Father has designed to deal with this condition of mankind where he can uh, fix the soul, the spirit, soul, and the body. The body will be changed, and as we, uh, when Jesus comes, the soul, the Bible tells us that we are saving the soul because, this, as the psalmist say, we hide the word of God in our soul, in our hearts, for the saving of the soul. So the soul, then, of mankind, which the Bible calls the heart, it is such a... Um, intense topic. Uh, it is so much. When you look at the Bible, you'll see scriptures about the heart and about the soul. I mean, just tons and, uh, of them. But my goal here is to help you to understand the importance of your soul because that's the battle that is happening in many arenas about you, is your soul. You are having a battle with you about controlling of your soul, the enemy is having a battle with you about controlling your soul, and God also is having, he's not, his word is in the mix of that also. So you and I, when we bring ourselves in harmony with each, with, with, it, with itself, meaning the soul, the spirit, the soul, and the body, when we bring ourselves in harmony, the Bible tells us that when we speak at that point in time, you and I are in faith. We are absolutely, we believe the word of God and over our circumstances, the facts of our circumstances, we choose to believe the truth. So I want you guys to understand that that is what we're telling you. And the man who is in control of the soul is in control of the man. And so we're looking at today, we're starting to study that the soul of man is broken down into three components or three parts. The soul consists of the will of mankind, the mind of mankind, and the emotion 
of the mankind. And so we're going to take a look today at each and every one of them so that we can see, according to the scripture, that this is correct and that we are not going off, if you will, into something that the Bible does not teach. And we look at science today and we look at people today and we know that they are familiar and they label that uh, the soul as the subconscious mind. That mind that is beneath your natural mind where you are uh, uh, thinking of just the things around you and so forth. And the Bible tells us that that subconscious mind, that's the soul of man. And he, I want to tell you guys, he is meditating day and night. And so he is meditating on something. That is how the soul of man is designed to do and to operate. He is a meditator. And that is why God wanted, he said in his, his word to Joshua, I want you to meditate on the word. Uh, so he was pointing him to the word of God because God knows that he has designed something in this man who is a meditator. And God was trying to bring to his attention that if you meditate on my word, you are going to get certain results. And he told them that you will have good success. And so you and I have to learn to do the very same thing. And that is why I keep telling you in Western Christianity, they tell us that we can't or we shouldn't meditate because if we meditate, they're going to have demons going to jump inside of us. Uh, um, and I can't understand that because if God is telling me to meditate, who are these men that are telling me not to meditate? So let's take a look at the Word of God and um, begin to lay our foundation before we go in deep and get to see the separation or the parts of man's uh, uh, anatomy when it comes to the soul is that uh, will of man, the mind of man, and the emotions of the man. Uh, Lamentations 3.20 My soul continually remembers. So we see that he is now telling us what is the capability of the soul. My soul continually remembers it and it bows down within me. But this I call to mind. So you see he's still talking about the soul of his. And therefore I have, I have hoped the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so he's now testifying of some stuff that he noticed about this God that he is in love with and that he has he remembered that he bowed down within him. And where is, what part of him is bowing down within him? It is the soul of the man. It is that part that God created when he joined his, his spirit, when he releases his spirit into us. And it says that man became a speaking soul. God is in love with us, man. And it says that the Lord is my portion. He makes the testimony. My, the Lord is my portion and says my soul. So his soul is doing this testifying as to who God is and what he has learned about his God. He has learned that he is going to, he's declaring that I'm going to put my hope, I have hoped in this God. The steadfast of the love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. The scripture tells us that we can come to him daily, come boldly before the throne of grace whereby you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. So we know that his mercies uh, never come to an end. They're new every morning. And you know that it, great is your faithfulness. So he's declaring the soul of this man is declaring the various information. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is a good, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation 
of the Lord. So the writer of Lamentation is giving us some advice as to who he sees God is and how his personality, his character, and he is suggesting that it is a good thing for that soul to wait quietly for God. So Proverbs 2.10, for wisdom enters your heart, and we know that heart, as I say to you, and that's what the Bible, when the Bible says, the heart, that is the soul, that is the heart of the um, the individual man, the spirit, the heart or the soul and the body. So the heart of the man is the soul. So when you see that word interchangeably, it is referencing the soul. And what a beautiful word to use when it talks to the soul, about the soul, the heart of man. And so the wisdom enters into the heart and knowledge will be pleasant to the soul. So we see that uh, all of these things reside in the, uh, the part that is called uh, the mind. And we see that uh, Proverbs 19, 20, 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevail. And we talked about this, and I've, I put this scripture in here because I want to uh, circle back always to let you guys know that the behavior God has said in the scripture, he said, I create the wicked and the righteous. All souls are mine. Um, he says, the heart of the king is in the hand of God. We know that he has certain things that um, he can utilize in man to cause him to do and fulfill his will on our behalf or the will of God, period. Because we know that in this dimension, Jesus said, thy will be done thy, uh, on earth as it is in heaven. So we know it's all about the will of God on this planet. And so that is why Jesus says, you can't do me any, any damage unless I know the Father has given you permission to do it. And if he has given you permission to do it, he has given me the grace uh, to go through it. And so you guys have to begin to see these things when you look outside of yourself into the world and understand that the Father is absolutely in control. He created both the wicked and the just. And all souls belong to him. And every single man's spirit, when he dies, it goes back to the Father. And um, uh, uh, the soul, as I said, that gift that God has given to us, that's the one that is being judged. And that is the one that we have power as to what we want to do with our decisions that we make on this planet. And so we see in Proverbs, it tells us that, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. So we see that knowledge and wisdom it belongs into the soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expression shall not be cut off. That is in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 14, Proverbs 16, 9. The mind of man plans his ways, but the Lord is the one who directs his step. How does he direct his steps? For the heart of the king is in the hand of God, and God uses grace to cause a man to do what he wants. And so the, the grace is causing man's uh, thoughts, that's where God deals with, that's where the enemy deals with, causes the thoughts to come, because the scripture tells us that it is because of the thoughts that come into one man that one man make the decision accordingly. So God is just going to put some thoughts into you, and you will obey him regardless. Even if it's to uh, do crazy things, you are, God has given the, he brought here the just and the unjust. And so uh, let's keep going. So if you see in Proverbs 16, 9, which is very clear, the mind of the man plans his ways. And that is in correlation with the part of man, which is his soul. And say. So, uh, Psalms 1, uh, Psalms 1, uh, 13, I believe, 13, 2, it says, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And days after days have sorrowed in my heart. So we know then, which I've said to you guys, is that the thoughts that come into our life will then uh, eventually manifest in our actions. And that is how 
one lives and moves on this planet. So, how long must I uh, take counsel in my soul, the scripture says, and have sorrow in my heart all the day long? And that is one interpretation. Let me give you another interpretation of that same scripture. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? So we see that emotional peace as well, which we talked about. Sorrow is in the realm of the soul. Sorrow in my heart. Sorrow in my heart. And so we are going to get to that aspect. But today, again, I just wanted to give you some scriptures showing that the mind of man, I praise you, for I am fearful and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Knowledge in the soul, the mind of the of the soul is there, so of the man. Romans twelve two do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is our responsibility when one becomes born again. Now look at the scripture. It is your responsibility. And I find that Christians are lazy. They expect God to do everything but Jesus said it is finished now. You'd get on, get with it and, and, and get busy. And so he says in Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world. That is ours. How are we conformed to this world? By the obedience of our thoughts to the thought of what is in control of our, our, of our soul. If you are being controlled by your flesh, Jesus told us what comes out of that and what comes out of a corrupt uh, soul. The works of the flesh are these. And it tells us that murder, uh, sexual immorality, all of these other things come out of the, uh, the soul, as well as some of those same behaviors are in the flesh. But he's telling you and I that we have the ability to do not be conformed to this world how do we do that? By the transforming of your uh, renewal of your mind, of your soul. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper as your soul prospers. So your responsibility and mine is to make our soul, uh, give it knowledge, give it wisdom. And where do we get that? The Bible tells us that we get that stuff from inside the Word of God. He tells uh, Joshua, this word, keep it before you night and day so that your ways will prosper. So if you want to be prosperous, that's how you do it. Get your soul man in order because whoever controls him controls the man. So we're continuing looking at the, the fact that the mind is a part of the soul, renewing of your mind that is a part of the soul, Romans seven twenty three. But I see, and this is what I, I'm trying to bring to you guys, this information here, um, so that you can understand what is going on within your body and, and the battle that is, uh, that is undertaking in your life. And this is until you die, guys, until I die too. And so this is the battle. And so let me describe it as it is described in First Corinthians and Romans and Colossians, and we'll take a look at those things. First Corinthians 2, 11. For who among men knows the thought of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? And we talk about the spirit of the man and the, and the soul. So the soul, the spirit man knows you, and he knows. He is trying to bring this alliance together, okay? He's trying to get that man, that soul, to agree with him versus agreeing with the flesh. So let's continue to see what's going on. For who among men know the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. And so we know that uh, the Bible tells us that the, whole, the Holy Spirit is here to teach us all things and lead us and guide us in truth and that he knows how to pray according to the will of the Father. So now let's take a look in and go into Romans and show you this battle. Romans seven twenty three. For I see a different law in the members of my body. So Paul is uh, talking to us. Waging war against the law of the mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. So we know then in his members, the law of sin, his soul and his flesh. 
You know that when one becomes born again, that spirit is new. But that law of sin is still hanging around in the soul and in the flesh. That, guys, is the battle. Now watch it. 725 Romans. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, or Jesus the Messiah, our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself, spirit, soul, and body, with my mind, he's talking about his soul, he says, I myself with my mind, I am serving the law of God, the word of God. But on the other hand, with my flesh, the law of sin. That is that battle. The man who controls the soul controls the man. And so we see that the mind, your mind, is a part of your soul. It is the, um, the first arena. The mind is where the thoughts linger. So this is why I'm showing you, you see, thoughts and the mind. This is where the first battle comes. And I want to make you guys aware of it. And it's that soul. The, the decision, uh, the war is this. Are you going to be obedient to God's word? Or are you going to be disobedient to, God, God, disobedient to God's word? And that disobedience will come through the desires of the flesh or the desires of the soul. Because the soul is still corrupt, but we can save it by the word of God, by meditating on the word of God. And tomorrow we're going to look a little more into that and show you. But I wanted to bring to your attention that your thoughts, okay, is where it lingers within your mind. Now, there's another component of you that lingers there within your soul. It's your will. We are decision-making ability as to who you are going to serve. That's the soul of the man. So let's take a look, um, continue to hear, and then before we leave, it says Colossians 1.21, And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in your mind, in your soul, how were you alienated and hostile in your soul, uh, uh, you know, Paul, engaged in evil deeds? And so we talked about what emanates from the soul, and Jesus says, the way to your things in life. Uh, murder, um, adultery, uh, sexual uh, um, immorality, all of these other things. And again, when you look in, in Galatians 5, it talks about the works of the flesh are these. And when you look at them, you'll see that there's, there's a similarity within those two uh, parts of one. So you see then that our soul was alienated formerly, but... Through the word of God, we can manage him. Okay? So, I am telling you, this is our responsibility as Jesus dictates. Matthew 22, verses 37. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That is our responsibility as Christians on this earth. That is our first responsibility. And then the Bible tells us as we do that, as we seek God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, the material things, because God, it tells us, understands and knows the needs of uh, what we have. The book of Psalm talks about how all the animals God is such a provider. And I'm going to use that uh, um, verse, uh, you know, Psalms, to talk about how God is a provider. The animals, the lions, it talks about the young lions, all of them are waiting for when God uh, brings their food and provide for them. All of them. There is nothing here. Everybody's, uh, uh, you know, on his timetable, on his dime, if you will. And those who are rebellious, you think you're, you're, you know, you're on his dime too. So you are on my father's dime. That's why I remember when I was out there witnessing in the street and uh, knocked on his door and the Satanist answers the door and his, his house is full of all the 
the, the markings and the skulls and all this stuff in black and whatever. And he comes out and I, I'm trying to bring some light into his dark world about Jesus Christ, you know. And he tells me, he begins to talk to me and tell me about Satan. And I tell him, I said, man, you are serving my slave. I said, but I am trying to come to your place to introduce to you uh, uh, Yeshua, the Messiah, the one who stripped your master naked in front of all the angels and demons and everything, stripped him naked, took away all of his power, his authority, everything he got. And he gave it to me. So your master is my slave. So I'm trying to introduce you to Jesus Christ. He looks at me, closed the door, and, uh, uh, you know, walked away from salvation. But it's the truth. In all of his roaring like a lion, like a, like a lion, in all of his things, the scripture tells us that we have power over principalities and powers in heavenly places and wickedness. All of his dominion, the smallest Christian who understands the power within their soul and that they have served the Lord, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, the entirety of you. The meaning your soul, your heart, your, your being, your existence is in love with this God. Satan and all of his kingdom are afraid of you any day and every day because he knows a man and a woman like that, they recognize that they are no longer slaves, but they are the sons of God. And the Bible says, Beloved, you are the sons of God. We are, not, we are the sons of God now. Just like how he ran from, and all those demons ran from Jesus, they ran from, they can run from you because Jesus says, greater things than these shall you do because I go to the Father. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit and that new spirit that God gave you and I says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, you know, and a sound mind, self-control and all these things. You and I are walking power. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have angels at our disposal. The man who knows who he is in Jesus Christ is sheer power. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. It also tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight.